Hello, and welcome to the 2021 Parish Art Museum Student Exhibition High School Awards Ceremony. I'm Kara Conklin Wingfield, and I direct the Education Department at the Parish Art Museum. And this year, the ceremony is being presented as part of Friday Night Live programs, the museum's year round Friday night public programs, which are made possible by the generosity of our presenting sponsor, Bank of America, and with additional support from Sandy and Stephen Pearlbinder. So there are just two days left to view the 2021 student exhibition. It's currently on view at the museum and can be uh, visited. Here are a couple images. It can be visited Saturday and Sunday this weekend, both days this weekend. And um, in order to do that, you just need to go to parishart.org and book into one of the timed entry slots. And um, exhibiting students and their families are all free. You'll see that as one of your options. Um, and if that's not possible, we also have a um, 360 degree online exhibition that'll be on the museum's website. It's currently on the museum's website, but it'll also be there as a permanent record of the exhibition where you can walk through virtually and look at the work up close. So this, this ceremony is usually presented on the closing weekend of the exhibition. It's a really beautiful highlight where all of the student honorees are able to come together. But this year we're honoring 69 students out of nearly 400 who were who are exhibiting in the high school portion of the exhibition. So given the restrictions on capacity, there really was no way we could do that in person. Only about a third of the students could attend with a family member. So we're doing the best we can to honor everyone and make this uh, student-centered. And in order to do that, I'm joined tonight to present these awards by Professor Neil Slaughter, who's a painter, and a professor emeritus from Long Island University. He has over 30 years of experience teaching on the college level. And for at least the last 10 years, he's been working with the museum on this project. And he brings a great deal of care and devotes a great amount of time to reviewing the student exhibition and making the selection. I hope everyone has seen Neil's extensive comments, which have, were sent to you with your registration confirmation and are also available on the museum's website. And right now, Neil, I'm gonna turn it over to you. If you could please tell us a little bit about how you approach making these selections and viewing the exhibition. Okay, thank you very much, Kara. Uh, I um, wanted to just say that having done this for, as Kara said, 10 years, it's, uh, it's amazing what's happened this year with the pandemic. And uh, I, I still went in and each year, I'm sort of amazed how many really good artists there are at, at such a young age. And um, this year was no different. In fact, each year, it seems like I add more and more. I mean, she just said 69 we're honoring this year. I had no idea when I was selecting this one and that one and this, that it was going to add up to that. And as I typed up my commentary, which I do hope you'll get to read at some point. Uh, it, it came out to 36 pages. <laughs> so anyway, we have a lot to share with you tonight. But what generally what happens is, is when, uh, when one's creating art, there's an intrinsic, uh, intrinsically linked to interpretation, I think. Artists are uh, stimulated maybe visually or they have some idea they want to communicate visually and they approach it um, you know they, as they become stimulated they they generally are motivated by that and they want to communicate that and of course for visual artists they're going to make some kind of visual uh, interpretation of whatever it is whether it's a social commentary or it's a straightforward representational realist you know eyeballing a still life or a figure or a landscape or whatever it might be. And when I'm judging though, regardless whether it's uh, representational or uh, abstract or conceptual, whatever the case may be, I try to be as objective as possible when I'm uh, doing this so that 
the students, when they see the work, they, they'll see that there's a variety that I've uh, selected over the course of the uh, exhibition. And uh, so I try to look, I try to, I, I analyze it based on formal criteria. I analyze it based on um, sometimes the content is maybe more important than the, um, the, the visuals, the, the formal elements. But I think the best art is usually when there's a balance between form and content. So that's, you know, in a nutshell, how I go about this. Thank you, Neil. And I'm gonna ask you to share more as we go, go through. All right. So the first set of awards are for seniors. And um, before we get to them, I just want to mention to everyone that throughout the presentation, if you'd like to put any comments or questions into the chat, Neil and I will address them at the end of the presentation. So when, when Neil comes in to have a look at the exhibition, and we can bring those, the presentation up now, we have all the seniors marked. Um, so the, but he doesn't come with a set of prescribed categories or a set number. He's really responding the way that he described to you, um, looking for that balance in the work um, between say technical ability and a message that, um, that's coming through in the work. So it's very free um, and he's open to respond to whatever, um, whatever moves him and draws his attention. But we do have the seniors marked understanding that there's a big range of development between the beginning and the end of a high school career and that students have different um, access to opportunities to study art throughout their four years. So um, we can go ahead and start. The first category is for drawing and illustration. And before we begin, I just wanna note, in some cases you'll see pictures of the student along with their work. We re reached out to all the art teachers and asked if um, students wanted to share a portrait of themselves along with it, and some did. And um, that was part of our effort to make this as, as student-centered as we can. So in each case, I'll just be calling the student's name, the title of the work, the media used, and then the school name. So you can go ahead up to the first one, Victor. These are the um, awards for drawing and illustration. The first is Ava Engstrom for the work Outback, watercolor and ink on illustration board. And she's from East Hampton High School. Um, oh, it's okay. Anna Iniguez, War of Emotions on Wood from Bellport High School. And that's actually burned in. That's, and what I like about this is this circular kind of motion because the, um, the title of it was uh, War of Emotions and it seems like we're always going around in circles with our emotions throughout life, it seems like. It doesn't stop in high school, I can tell you. Yeah, it's appropriate throughout life, for sure. Olivia Luce. Untitled Chalk Pastel on Paper from West Hampton Beach High School. That's a fantastic piece. Great sense of energy in there. And it, it kind of reminds me of like those Marvel comics where they're showing you this, this action and this movement. It's, it's really great. Mims McNeil, Desperate from a Different Angle, Charcoal yeah, this, this from one, William I think. Floyd High School. This one I think is interesting in that it's uh, the drawing of the figure is a, is a little bit crude in a way, but I think that this is one of those where the content and the emotional content is really interesting. It's very subtle, but if, the, if they can see it on the screen, these sort of eyes that look like they're sewn shut, which actually it was thread and it's as if it's bleeding tears. And then that hand coming in, that's really a nice element, how it leads one into the composition. So I found that a, a very powerful, a psychologically powerful piece. Lucy Olander, 
Untitled Scratch Board from West Hampton Beach High School. It's a great sense of uh, graphic impact to this, you know, with the scratching out to, to come up with all those. It's, it's almost like a um, etching in a way, these little lines that make between the darks and the lights, you know, this contrast, strong graphic impact. Lauren Roberts, identity versus role confusion, colored pencil, Conte and charcoal, Eastport South Manor High School. That's a really strong piece too. I just kept looking at it. There's, it's just so unusual, the surrealism in it with these sort of different heads that are, you know, kind of coming out of her face, these different emotions. I think it's really powerful. Emma Rochetta, Beneath the Bottles, Colored Pencil, Eastport South Manor High School. That's a nice little twist on that classic message in a bottle, you know, where a bottle floats in onto the seashore and there's some message someone's, you know, scribbled to maybe her loved one or whatever, and they're lost on an island or something, marooned on an island. But in this case, the inside the bottle is the ocean being trapped. And it could also be a social commentary about pollution too, you know, and especially if that were a plastic bottle because of all the plastic bottles we've been reading about in the news that are floating up on all of these shores. Isabella Sasso, Untitled Pen on Paper, West Hampton Beach High School. I just really think it's an excellent composition with all these diagonals and angles uh, that keeps the eye moving through it. And it's, it's, just, it's just really well rendered too. It's excellent. Lilia Schaefer, Reaching Out, Pastel on Paper, East Hampton High School. I like that sort of uh, hypnotic stare, the way these hands are coming towards her and she's just sort of in a wonderment what's going on here. But there's also a cohesive color. So the hands, the colors that are in those hands, red, yellow, and blue, which are of course primary colors, figure into the face and the hair, et cetera. It's, it's a nice piece. Grace Schmelzer, Untitled Colored Pencil on Paper, West Hampton Beach High School. This has a sort of a film noir look to it, this dark atmospheric background with this head emerging. And then of course that smoke wafting up through and causing uh, an interesting configuration of, of an abstraction versus the head, which is really well rendered. The next category is mixed media and collage. Jade Jackie. Untitled Mixed Media on Canvas from West Hampton Beach High School. It's like a classic case of um, cubism and even the color scheme, taking the photograph and then moving out from the photo, utilizing the same sort of color scheme that's found in the photo elsewhere in the painted parts. It's, uh, I think this student maybe has looked at David Hockney in addition to the Cubists, the famous Cubists like Picasso and, and Brock, et cetera. Kayla Yemenes, Untitled Mixed Media on Paper from West Hampton Beach High School. I like, if you will, excuse the pun, the touching quality of all these hands coming into this larger hand and uh, we're not exactly sure what it's about, but it could be beggars, it could be people thanking, it could be children of that larger hand, the adult's hand. I, I don't know, it's, but I, I like the way it's rendered and it, what it communicates to me. Campbell Cast, Untitled Mixed Media on Paper, West Hampton Beach High School. The mask may sort of cover her identity to some degree, and yet we know the issues that she is um, confronted with, or we're all confronted with, and perhaps what she wants to voice 
a bigger voice and a social commentary of issues that are described on the mask. So I found that a, a really wonderful piece too. Amanda Cray, Moving Through Time, Mixed Media on Canvas, East Hampton High School. It's just a really unusual configuration with all of those heads as the title would indicate, moving through time. And there's um, some, you can't see it perhaps in this image, but up close, I remember, I think I saw a collage of some newspaper bits and pieces and just the, what I call a personal palette, that unusual color too. It's, it's, it's really nice, a limited palette, but it's a very powerful kind of rendering. Gaia Unaldi, Gary D. Bixborn Technical Center, Untitled Marker and Photoshop. Yeah, it's uh, most people would think of a snake recoiling like that as, as you know, this sort of impact of, of uh, being scared, but there's something sort of beautiful about these harmonious color schemes. So there's that dichotomy between the, the snake's mouth and the the threatening quality, and then this kind of cool, calm, blue-green, you know, azure kind of coloring that I th find a, a nice juxtaposition. Samantha McNamara, Long Island, Mosaic with Mirror, Mattituck High School. I think the content here is what is uh, most important because there is a mirror here. And of course, as one is standing in front of the piece, one sees oneself. One could then start to reflect upon all sorts of things because the brown at the top is a map of Long Island. And then the blue pieces below represent the sea, probably the ocean coming up to the Southern shore of Long Island. And I, you can know, it, again, it could be a social commentary, whereas someone looking into that might reflect upon what are we doing to the oceans? Are we polluting them? What's happening here uh, on Long Island in particular? Brielle Olson, Reflecting Reservation, Watercolor and Gel Pen, Eastport South Manor High School. It's a, it's a small piece, I recall. It's something that could be overlooked on a wall full of big splashy colored pieces, but it was just so well rendered. I just, I liked, I like, it's, it's a, just a straightforward, nice drawing. There's a kind of a drama, this dramatic light and shadow. I think it's a, it's a very nice piece and that's it. Nayli Sinchi, Emphasis, Mixed Media, Hampton Bays High School. Well, it could be a greeting card. I mean, it's, it's a classic design, the black line drawing, and then it's colored in, of course, the center, as you can see. And I just find it, uh, it's a lovely little piece that I, I would see she can make a fortune making greeting cards of things like this. Mia Seidel, Mixed Untitled Mixed Media on Paper, West Hampton Beach High School. To me, this was one of the most uh, provocative pieces. It was, it was a, there was a contemplative quality, the way she's purposely cropped it in very close and the delicateness of how she's handled the coloring on the lips and the, the, the nose and the eyes. And then there's this crazy juxtaposition of all these little dark, things which gives it sort of a sinister quality of, um, I mean, they're not really ants, but those little dots make you feel like itchy. You know, there's a, there's a creepy quality to it, even though she looks so serene. Yeah, there's something more than just freckles. That's right. I think everyone is probably sensing how carefully Professor Slaughter looks at the exhibition, that he notices the smallest works and the large ones as well, which is part of why we really value the care that he takes in making these selections. I so the next, the next category is painting. 
Dream Smith, Mother, Oil Painting, Bellport High School. Now she's painted that in the classic traditional manner, but with that phone in her hand, that ubiquitous phone and the glasses on her head, which means she's probably uh, nearsighted when she has to see up close. I think it's, it says something about our society today. I mean, it's handled in a very traditional manner, but the, again, it's the content that makes this uh, rather ordinary banal scene of somebody looking at a cell phone become more extraordinary. Yusra Rashizada, Untitled Oil Painting, Shore and Waiting River High School. This piece, I can feel the heat. There's an exotic quality. It looks like it could be somewhere, I don't know, could be South America, could be the uh, tropical, you know, Far East. It has this really captivating quality and there's an intenseness to the heat. But, but what I'm not sure people can realize unless they see it in person is part of her headdress, headdress morphs into this, this part up here. I don't know, I'm pointing at it, but uh, it, you see a, um, a whole landscape in her headdress, which is very exotic, very imaginative as well. Araldo Pantaleon Castro, Untitled Acrylic on Canvas from Shelter Island School. This was a most unusual piece and it seems to be, he's looking for, he's, when you look at it, he's holding a flashlight, which is creating this triangular sort of pizza shaped wedge going off into the darkened sky. And there are these amorphous shapes. I don't know what they are, his imaginative quality. Then the piece of, earth or rock that he's sitting on also makes a triangular shape. And then there's this other amorphous shapes that are off to the left, which look kind of like some, some, something collapsing or floating in a sea. One's not sure what it is, but that makes a diagonal that comes back and points to the figure sitting. So all, all of these triangles point at the figure. So, it, and yet he's, he's very diminutive in, in size compared to the, the greater vastness of the space. Anika Griffin, Dilla of uh, Vanilla Roibos, acrylic painting, Eastport South Manor High School. Now something as simple and straightforward as a cup of tea or a cup of coffee with a little bit of milk could just be really ordinary. And yet she's made it extraordinary, mostly by her viewpoint of looking down, a bird's eye view, looking straight down, cropping it in in such a manner to see the abstraction found in reality. That's what I like about this. Aaron Lewandowski, Sunset Ashore, Acrylic on Canvas, Southampton High School. There's a, uh, kind of an awkwardness about this. There's, there's also something that's kind of dreamlike. It's like, uh, I don't know if the student has had any art history, but I'm sensing a uh, painting from German Expressionism or just the Austrian Expressionist. Somebody like Emil Nolde I, is what I wrote up in my commentary that reminds me of Emil Nolde's. And, and I just wanted to, uh, there was a, let me get to it. It just said, um, in, in Nolda's dates, by the way, are 1867 and 1956, and he didn't use color to precisely render, but instead used it to prevent a wistful look at an imagined scene, and that's what happens in this painting. It's sort of dreamlike. Mm -hmm. Cynthia Lynn, No Goodbyes, Watercolor, Southampton High School. It's a great subtlety, there's again this sort of hypnotic gaze in those eyes that draw us in, but the subtle shift with the shadow, this transparent shadow coming across her face is, well, in the pandemic, it could be evocative of, and it's, and the title is called No Goodbye, 
No goodbyes, yes. And it's a watercolor. No goodbyes, that could be translated about these people who put their hands up on a glass because they can't see the people physically go into the hospital to see their loved ones if they're suffering from the COVID virus. I, I don't know, I see this as a very uh, topical and good social commentary piece of our times, what we're living through right now. Fallon McKenna, 36 Chambers, Acrylic Paint, Eastport South Manor High School. It's got a powerful graphic, strong impact, the black, the white, the really well-rendered heads, heads that are almost collage-like. He's but they're all painted. That's what's nice. It's all um, painted in acrylic paint. And it, and it shows that he knows how to handle a brush. It's, it's a powerful piece. Wachawaste Win McNeil, for mom, acrylic on wood, William Floyd High School. This was, a, I think, a fairly ambitious piece. You can't tell by looking at the computer screen the sizes of any of these, but this was a fairly substantial and, as I said, ambitious piece that was about uh, two by three feet or maybe not quite that large, but it was large compared to everything around it. And the, the student, it's called For Mom, and when you're far away, you just sort of see a total abstraction and, and each piece in, within that abstraction is handled with flat paint. There's not a real um, blending going on. It blend, the blending, if any, takes place through the comparison and contrast of all the separate pieces that are put together. One can see that there is a figure with, immersed within this greater abstraction though, which is presumably maybe his mother or her mother. Who did this? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Julia Shiver, Untitled Acrylic, Shoreham Wading River High School. By contrast to that previous piece, this was a very small piece that I almost overlooked the first time. I thought it was a photo collage or something. I didn't even realize that it was actually painted. And once I got up close upon closer inspection, I realized this was a very unusual sort of surrealistic piece with these three doors. What is that? The opening the door, what's behind the door? There's a, there's a real mystery here. And it's a personal piece because it's untitled. So only the artist knows what's going on in that. But I found it nevertheless, uh, something that's small and intimate and yet it could speak volumes. Look at that mouth. <laughs> It does. Our next category is photography. Isabella Di Corrado, Withering in Waste, Digitally Manipulated Photographs, Gary D. Bisborn Technical Center. It's a um, surrealistic in this figure floating in this well, she says she's withering away. I, I, I don't necessarily see that, but I, I could, you know, the greenness could be some kind of slime and it could be, again, a social commentary on pollution. I, who knows? It's not uh, conveyed, but when the title might suggest that, withering and waste. Lauren Gabbard, Adventures in Nature, Digital Print. East Hampton High School. It's a fairly large photograph and it's, uh, it has an excellent depth of field from a technical standpoint. It's a very straightforward photograph, but it, you know we wanna kind of wander down that road and see where it leads us. Tina Tin Gabunia, born under a happy star, photographic print, the Roth School. Um, I'm not sure what the, I don't, I don't see that as stars. I see those, maybe it's just me, but I keep seeing them almost like um, rib cages, rib like cages, uh, x x-rays. Yeah. And so I found that that coupled with that, that hypnotic stare 
the way she's looking out at us, there's something more that, than meets the eye going on here in a surrealistic manner. Alexander Garcia, water drop, photograph, Gary D. Bixborn Technical Center. So the photograph yeah, being held by the student there. Yeah, that, that's just, that. an, it's an excellent, when you can see the uh, picture up close, you realize it's of course shot at high speed because it captures the single drop coming in and splashing back up. But what's interesting is when it freezes it like that, the actual line of the drop, this vertical line going up before the spray comes out, almost looks like a solid water fountain. And so I found that kind of juxtaposition very interesting. Allison Eidler, Wildfire, Digital Photograph, Eastport South Manor High School. This was just a uh, something that I didn't notice quite right away. It's not terribly large, but of course the red you look, and I didn't even, before I read the title, I didn't know that it was a fire. And then upon looking at it and thinking of fires, if one looks, there's a, sort of a diagonal kind of cross going on there. And as soon as I saw that as a cross, and I immediately thought of the Ku Klux Klan because they would burn crosses. And then I started thinking this could be a real heavy duty social commentary. Although to look at that beautiful photograph of the student, that probably wasn't even crossed her mind, but it just goes to show that uh, artwork can really register different feelings in the, and the interpretation when uh, an individual looks at something. Brendan Young, New York City Vessel, Digital Photograph, Miller Place High School. I just love the uh, sort of kaleidoscopic feel to this piece. And those of you who actually know this enormous artwork called The Vessel, which is a series of stairs winding its way up, it's, uh, it could become really kind of cliche of just looking down and taking a photograph, but somehow something about the color, the way she's cropped it and framed it, it's just, it's a, it has that kaleidoscopic kind of feel to it. I, I thought it was really marvelous. Caitlin Moretto, Moretta, The Forgotten, Digitally Manipulated Photograph, Gary D. Bixborn Technical Center. I think the uh, title says it all, The Forgotten, and it's clearly the student is trying to sort of camouflage that figure who's being um, covered over or, or filtered out in some manner, of whatever's happening on top, so that she's just sort of wasting away. Lily Vallow Loney, Crashing Waves, Digital Print, East Hampton High School. It was a large black and white photograph and it really conveyed the sense of turbulence. I take walks almost every day on the beach and I also sometimes paint the ocean and I, I know you gotta be, well, with a photograph, you can capture that or you don't capture it. The, the wave's already broken. In this case, she just captured it or he captured it at the, just that precise moment to convey that turbulence. I really think it's strong. The next category is graphic design or digital media. Andrea Ponte, self-portrait, digital illustration, Southampton High School. Now, if he had just portrayed himself like the picture on the left, it would just be another high school portrait. But the way he's handled this, the sunglasses, the finger on the lip, this, this unusual coloring, I found it uh, taking it beyond the cliche or beyond the normal, beyond the ordinary to the extraordinary. Olivia Bugala, The Prey, Digital Illustration, Gary D. Bixborn Technical Center. 
you know, I'm, I'm not a digital illustrator, but I have to say, looking at that, it really, she's, she's got such a nice uh, subtle shift in these values from black to white with all these subtle gray tones in between. It really conveys a, a, a sense of space. It's in just a nice configuration of shapes with a, that forest. Love it. Cameron Kerr-Smith, CAT, Computer Graphics, Bellport High School. Cool cats with a K, what else can I say? <laughs> yeah, it, this makes everyone smile. It does, it makes everybody laugh. Mm -hmm. Especially the cat that has eye contact with the Yes, user. absolutely. Jennifer Muller, Myth Mythical Trio, Digital Prince, Southampton High School. I see this type of, you know, with the big eyes, this is a, uh, it, I think it's, it's, it's an Asian, what's it called? I forgot the name of it. Um, anime? Anime. An anime. anime type. It, it, it's, it, it derives from that, but uh, the this, this student has just handled it also, in each one of those has handled it so well that uh, it just, it's a very good representation of anime. I don't, that's why I decided to recognize it. Olivia Nicoletti, Untitled Digital Composition, Shortham Waiting River High School. Now, I think in this case, the student has actually drawn these. Um, it's, it's a really nice and very imaginative, sort of like a gargoyle type cat, sort of a figure and cat. And, it's an unusual, but it's it certainly, I just kept staring at it, wondering about it, thinking of gargoyles anyway, nicely handled. Kyle Tobias, The Triangle, Digital Print, William Floyd High School. This piece is truly remarkable. Uh, this is so professional, I kept, I even asked Kara to look it up. I said, is this person copying some other artist's work? Because it's technically handled well, but the way it's drawn, the perspective, looking be, sort of like being in the water, looking underneath through the transparency of that uh, figure with the raft, with these um, uh, uh, tentacles from an octopus or dragon forms that are curling through there. It's just so well done. I can't, I can't believe this kid's in high school doing that. It's so wonderfully done. So the final category for the seniors is 3D. We didn't have as much sculpture as we had in other years. I think it was a difficult year for students to work in sculpture. But we have two artists to recognize. Cassius Luber called Collected Works from Advanced Art, Mixed Media from the Roth School. Uh, there's no title to it, but what an unusual configuration and combination of different things like feathers and who knows what, but it just the, the combina it, it's, it's clearly a case where you find all these disparate things put them together and it transcends and transforms into something entirely unique. And that's what art's all about. And just one more, Hudson Musnicki called Clay SBO Pier, 3D Mixed Media from East Hampton High School. Well, I hope he goes into architecture because he clearly has a knack for handling that is beautifully hand, just from a technical standpoint, all of those layers of cardboard to show the, 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 uh, the beach kind of moving down with the dock curling out and around. Kara and I both liked it and we're not sure if this was his intent, but it also makes kind of like a question mark if you're standing on the other side, looking down on top of it. It yeah, I think that way. was his intention, because when I looked through, when I was preparing to get pronunciations right for this, I see that he used the Latin word for question. Uh -huh. oh, oh, yes, yes, the, in the title, right. <laughs> question, Pierre. It's wonderful, wonderful. And 
Before we go on to the ones to watch, just because when we prepared this, we weren't sure that Neil was going to share his comments about every piece, but I think that maybe we skipped over the very first artist. Did we? Um, Victor, is it possible to go back to the very first under drawing and illustration? Oh, this one, yes. Um, th this artist, I don't think it was her intention, even though one can sort of see sky, foliage, grass, probably a sidewalk, pavement, whatever. I think this artist was much more interested in uh, taking a representational form, but clearly going for abstraction and for patterning. There are so many wonderful little patterns in there and all these little, little uh, hatched kind of marks and scribbles and everything else. So that's what drew me to the piece. She was Thanks. disciplined. Thank you both for going back to that because I think it's really clear that Neil gives equal attention to everything. And I wanted that to make sure that that comes through. So if we could just jump ahead to the ones to watch, these are the, the, arts, the works of art that aren't marked for Neil to sp pay special attention to. These are not um, high school seniors, but these are other pieces he, can't, he couldn't help noticing as he was reviewing the exhibition. And it's a category that he created back um, when he was first doing this. And we used to have just a handful, but now it's grown into something a lot larger. So Neil, do you wanna say a little bit about the ones to watch and why you chose to create that separate designation? Sure. Uh, over my, I'm now retired, but over my 40 years of teaching, I, you know, I've juried a lot of exhibitions and I only taught college age students, but when you see exhibitions like this where there are 400 or 500 pieces and you're only supposed to judge the seniors, which makes sense in a way, nevertheless, there are, there are such a nice array of other work that just grabbed my attention that I sort of felt, you know, they should be recognized as well, even though they're not yet seniors. So that, I don't know how many years ago it was, I created this category called Ones to Watch. And as Kara said, it was only a, um, initially it was only a, a handful. This year I picked 25 of them. And I wrote a, a, a quick sort of sentence about each one. And maybe we don't have time to go through all of those, but uh, uh, you know, I just, I, I just want to, say how, and, and, and one other thing I wanna mention before I forget, I wanna um, congratulate the teachers because the teachers have so much to do with inspiring and encouraging students. And that's what I always want to do as a, as a teacher. I can remember when I was a high school student, and that was a long time ago, you know, 55 plus years ago, that uh, I can remember my, high school teacher singling me out and she uh, put me up for an award for what was called the governor's honors program in, in the state of Georgia because I was I grew up in Atlanta and uh, it, it was such encouragement that when I went to college I wasn't exactly sure what it, I was going to major in but eventually it became art and maybe that was in fact because I was encouraged at a young age so this is my way of encouraging these young students to keep hammering away at it and what else can I say? Great, thank you, Neil. So these all go through, we have um, two images per um, slide and then we'll look at um, any comments or questions you might have in the chat. So these are the ones to watch. Ariana Adamo in Conte from Eastport South Manor High School. And Elise Beavers, Collected Works from Advanced Art, Acrylic on Canvas, The Raw School. They're both nicely, um, I was going to say rendered, but they're, they're more about abstraction and, uh, you know, those floating things on the right. I just don't even know what they are, but it's such a nice, she's used a very limited palette but again, and it was a small piece, but communicated something to me that, um, and then of course the shh is nice. It's sort of this 
a sense of distortion, but a, a sense of, of um, abstraction. Michael Balavia, I have the title The Lake, but I think in the Q&A I have a correction that it's called Aurora Lake, digital painting from Gary D. Bixborn Technical Center, and Alexia Benjamin, Hodgepodge, it's a graphite drawing from Bellport High School. Well, that reflection on the Aurora Lake certainly seems to reflect the Aurora Borealis going up above it. And of course, it's a, it's a highly contrived piece with those, those trees kind of going back in one point perspective. It's very uh, uh, abstract oriented. Whereas the one on the right is like a trompe l'oeil piece. It's beautifully rendered and it, it invites the viewer to come in and inspect all of that detail from the keys to the little pins to the crosswood puzzle, et cetera, et cetera. It's really wonderfully rendered. That per, and, and these people are young, be, you know, that, to have that kind of patience, that says something that's encouraging, I think, right there. Kimberly Bermio, DNF, acrylic on canvas from East Hampton High School, and Kira Bree, Autumn Still Life, colored pencil from Eastport South Manor High School. The one on the right, she's only a 10th grader and, and yet the attention to rendering, it's, it's eyeballing those apples and really putting together, and the same with the sort of prayer plant leaves. One suggestion, I would have that student look at an artist who's a still life painter, a very good one named Sarah Sedwick, S-E-D-W-I-C-K, Sarah Sedwick. Have her look her up on the, she's a teacher, lives out in, um, I think it's Oregon, but she paints simple still lives and just have her look at how she takes color from the surrounding areas and incorporates it in so that the pumpkin, for instance, wouldn't be isolated from the blue in the background if she incorporates some of that coolness into the apples or into the tabletop, et cetera. Now, the one on the left, there's a really nice configuration. I, I also like the fact that it's at night and we get a sense of the street lamp or the, the dockside lamp with that light kind of filtering down over the scene. It's really wonderfully rendered and it's painted. It's a really nice painting. Kathleen Connolly, Looking Glass, Watercolors, Eastport South Manor High School. And Sarah Cornaciulio, Portrait in Graphite from Bellport High School. Well, there's an exuberance on that one on the right, the, just a joie de vivre. And I just love all the rendering, including all the freckles. There's just something really fun about it. And of course, the one on the left, it's all about the eyes and that slicing through and it, it sort of it is very evocative. Emilio Rocha Fuentes, collected works from an advanced art, acrylic on cardboard from the Roth School. And Olivia Glass, also collected works from Advanced Art, acrylic on canvas, the Roth School. Both of these seem to be about less is more. And the one on the right, I mean, it's, it almost sounds cliche, but that's real eye candy. That person really paid attention. And didn't just paint the lollipop, painted that inside the plastic which acts as a foil to as another, you know, there's a square within a square and then this round thing, it's beautifully rendered. Then one on the right, taking that cardboard, that's a conceptual kind of idea, taking this old ripped up corrugated cardboard and only drawing part of the building. It's, it's, it's very subtle. Both of them have subtlety beyond belief and sophisticated for their age. Ella Glover, Fox, White Charcoal from Mattituck High School, and Daniela Gonzalez, Portrait, Graphite on Paper, Hampton Bays High School. Well, there's taking a social commentary shot, very foxy of, the, of that artist who have uh, 
introduced humor in there. And of course, holding up the gun that he or she was trying to evade as the fox scampers across the ground. Uh, and the one on the right is just a nice rendering. It's a lot of different kind of textures, beautiful handling of that nose, which really projects out. And of course, it's a flat two-dimensional plane, but he's conveyed the uh, illusion of volume quite well. Samantha Hildesheim, Crow, Wood Burning from Mattituck High School. Well, that. And Lucas Homert, The Arrival, photographic print from the Ross School. I think the uh, burn piece, the burned bird is, must be a project. It, it, was that in the same, I can't remember if that was in, from the same high school as the other one, but it's, no. it's a very nice technique and it's just really well rendered. It's, and the fact that they're actually burning to create those, um, those images is, is wonderful. The one on the right, it's one of the best photographs in the show. It, it grabbed my attention right off the bat and, and I couldn't believe it wasn't a senior. Everything works in that from the composition to the placement of the figure, the, the shadow and light patterns. It's, it's, it's again, sort of seeing abstraction in reality. Excellent. Robert Yannacone, Quenching My Thoughts, colored pencil from Eastport South Manor Junior Senior High School. And Jaden Cass, Reflection, photograph from Gary D. Bixborn Technical Center. I, I, I'm still mesmerized by that colored pencil drawing and also how clever, it's not just that it's well rendered, which it is, it's also the clever compositional quality because if you look closely, there's this great abstraction in the bottom of the glass and it's sort of the colors are reflected on the palm of the hand and that's all reiterated as you go around the composition into the face, it's just, it's just beautiful. And then on one on the right, here's a classic case of taking something as banal as a trash can laid in the back of a pickup truck, but this subtle kind of coloration with the warm tones inside the barrel with the cool tones on the outside of the barrel. And then those warm tones are reiterated again in the pickup truck with then the, the reflection in the diagonal going across the windscreen. So it's a really, it's again, finding abstraction in reality. Gavin Melcher, After the Rain, photograph from Shoreham Rain River High School. And Kaylin Metz, View from the Mountaintop, paper collage, also from Shoreham Rain River High School. Both of these pieces are about transcendence and transformation. On the left, that photograph of a cabbage, one, I see it as a rose. There's something that's so beautiful about the way it's handled. The one on the right, it's completely made up of collaged bits and pieces of paper just glued down to create this kind of cubus landscape. And they both, there's a transformation going on in both of them and a transcendence. Leonardo Magnola, Purple Haze, Computer Graphics, Belport High School, and Claire Nemschik, 2005, Resin, from Mattituck High School. Both of them speak to me. Well, the one on the left, I actually saw Jimi Hendrix play live in the late 1960, 68 or 69. And that guy really captured the psychedelic 60s in that picture. It's excellent. And the one on the right, the, the poured resin creating this, these amorphous shapes that are just dreamlike. And then the way that 2005 is on the top, I, I don't know what that signifies, but it's, it's beautifully handled. You know, being a poured piece, they should look at uh, Helen Frankenthaler. Or Morris Lewis, another person who poured, poured paint, made a living on it. Simonetta Pion, untitled photograph from the Roth School. And Maya Del Pertio, 
Sunset Harbor Acrylic on Canvas, East Hampton High School. I think that's a perfect conception of sort of a yin yang, this, this oval shape that's the same person, two different, you know, it's just the way it's put together. It's extremely clever and very sophisticated. And then the painting on the right, it's all about the docks. If you didn't have those dock pilings going through there, that's what breaks up that completely horizontal, well, there would be a horizontal to quality about that, but it's these vertical dock pilings that are what makes that piece much more interesting than it would be normally. Leah Perez, Inadequate Perfection, Chalk, Pastel, and Conte from Eastport South Manor High School. Sarah Spanberg, Collage Face, Acrylic on Canvas from Southampton High School. The one on the left is a psychological self-portrait, which is it's reminiscent of what one thinks of with Edvard Munch's The Scream. You know, I see that in there. And then the one on the right, there's this dislocation in time and space because of the way the artist has, uh, it's a drawing, but, but putting together all of those different facets of the face and then even the flower in, shape over the mouth, the pattern in the the shirt she's wearing, it's just, it's really interesting. It's really nicely handled. And these are the last two. Alexis Sarvino, Untitled Photograph from Mattituck High School. And Amelia Winter, Untitled Acrylic on Canvas from the Ross School. Well, that photograph on the left, being down there at the dog's level is just a wonderful, uh, way to look at it, seeing um, from that viewpoint or that vantage point. And also the fact, this may have been an accident, but it's just so clever that the cool tones from the sky are reflected in the rocks. And then there are several rocks. The brown tones are, of course, found in the dog itself. So there's a nice amalgamation of warm and cool tones in that photograph. The one on the right is just a very cathartic, um, there's just a poignant catharsis to this. It, it's, it's all about content and the way it's handled is, is you know, look, look what it says too. Um, I also, I with what respect to this one, I have a correction from the artist um, themselves, I think, oh. which says the painting is actually called I Don't Belong to My Thoughts, and the student is grade 10, not 11. And the, it's oil on canvas. So gosh, we did, have a few of the details wrong, but still. Well, for a 10th grader, for a 10th grader to have that kind of sophisticated, um, deep introspection at such a young age, that's phenomenal. So at this point, I'm gonna to turn to the chat where I got some of this, um, this minute by minute information. Um, let me have a look and see. I have some, okay, here we go. I'm just finding it now. And um, we have a few comments and I would say that among the participants, it was really wonderful to see, to recognize the names of many of the student artists and of the art teachers. And I want to reiterate Neil's comments to thank the art teachers for their, their dedication and their support of their students every year and this year more than ever, when especially a lot of our older students were having to go to um, school in a hybrid situation, which is very challenging for everyone and challenging for making art. So I have some very nice- You get nice, two thumbs up from me for that. Nice comments. And I really appreciate, um, a few people have said how much they appreciate you, Neil, saying something about every work, which he does this every year. He writes up these extensive comments, but we don't always have the forum to share them with everyone. And that's a nice result of this, even though we're not able to be in person and we can't see the students and experience their joy, it is nice to get to, um, to share that with everyone. And we have some nice uh, 
comments from the teacher, appreciative of those very specific observations. The correction I just mentioned about um, an appreciation of ones to watch and taking the time to bring attention to the work of underclass, the underclass students. Oh, it just seems like we have very positive comments and thank yous and congratulations. And so far, I don't see any questions. I think I've come to the end. Let me see. No, that's it. We got the corrected titles for the two works. And um, well, I just oh, uh, I have a, we have a do of a question, which I oh, think okay. you should answer, Neil. All right, <laughs> I think I'll you should answer this. It I'll says, Neil, what is the question behind you? I mean, the painting behind you. Oh, this is a uh, a landscape. It's out here. It's between. Um, it's it's kind of off of the Sag Harbor Turnpike. There's this pond that has uh, uh, some sort of lily pads. I painted this years ago. I moved here from California. I used to teach at Loyola Marymount University in Los Angeles. I moved here in 1993, and I probably painted that. 94 or something like that and it just sort of fits perfectly over my fireplace if i could i could show Go right ahead yeah <laughs> this, this is, is a great one this, let me just turn on a light here uh i don't know if you can even see mm -hmm. it but um this is the 59th street bridge or the queensboro bridge as it's called and uh, I did the drawing in black and white from Roosevelt Island looking into uh, Manhattan. And then I did the painting kind of based on the drawing. And also I took some photographs as well. But the, I, when I take photographs, it's only source material. I don't copy photographs. In fact, the, the, the um, sky and the lighting, it's all very much invented to make it more either romanticized or dramatic or whatever the case may be that I'm trying to create a mood in, in paintings like that. Great, thanks for sharing that, Neil. And I wanna say that I met you in 1994 when you were the featured artist in the Parish's Juried exhibition that year. Oh, I yes. think you had just come back from um, a, a trip to Africa where you made a series of paintings and they were featured in that exhibition. And when we first had you come um, work with us on the student exhibition, like I said, that was about 10 years ago. Yeah. And you weren't the only juror that year, but I noticed something very, very special about the way that you, the care you took in looking at the work and how rigorous you were in responding to the work. And I felt like, I really wanted to have that as part of the, the student exhibition going forward. So I'm really grateful to you for being with us these all these years and for taking this time. I know it means a lot to the students. And um, from well, what I'm Well, it means seeing, a lot to me that you reiterate that almost every <laughs> year. You're so kind and keep having me come back. And I guess, you know, I, I really enjoyed teaching. And even though I've retired after four full decades of doing that, and I taught in England for a couple of years, I taught in uh, Philadelphia my first couple of years out of graduate school, which was at Indiana University is where I went to graduate school, and then California for a decade, and then, you know, 20, almost 25 years with Long Island University. So it's, it's just, it's sort of, I come from a line of academics. My uncle, my father's brother was a uh, history professor and my father had his PhD in hydrology and fluid mechanics and he taught civil engineering for 30 years or so at Georgia Tech, which is why we, he started off at the Naval Academy from World War II and then we ended up moving to Atlanta when I was a child, but um, so I guess teaching's in me, you know, I, and I liked the lifestyle of my own professors when I was in college. And as I said earlier, my high school teacher uh, was very encouraging. So I, I really like doing this because I didn't ever teach high school. So it's nice seeing what's going on in these uh, classrooms and in this pandemic to get the work that these teachers were able to get out of these students. It's just phenomenal. It really is phenomenal. And it's really clear that you um, understand 
the importance of the relationship between the educator and the student. And that comes, that really comes through. Well, so we are, um, we are just about out of time. I wanna thank everybody who joined us tonight and just um, reiterate that you can see the student exhibition in person either tomorrow or Sunday. And um, there's so much more to see than really can be conveyed on the computer screen, the scale of the work, the detail of the work. So I encourage you to do that if you can. And if you can't, there is that um, 360 exhibition, which has better quality images than we were able to, um, to show tonight. So with that, I'll say good night to everyone. And thank you for joining us. Thank you again for your um, participation each year, what the, what the teachers do. My hat's off to you and what the students give back is just dynamic and exciting. And I'm always grateful to see, to see what comes next year. And next year we'll be in person at the museum, be able to celebrate with the students. Let's hope so. <laughs> Thank you. Good night, everyone. Thank you very much.